Okay, so <clears throat> for our discussion about Rizal Law, so let's see its advantage and disadvantage, no? So Rizal Law, Boon or Bane. Have you heard already that there is a Rizal Law? And what is this law all about? Okay, for today, let's try to discover what is Rizal Law or what is content, or maybe its essence, as a, as a law, no? Bilang isang batas. Okay, probably you are aware why do we need law in a certain country or in a certain place, no? Bakit kailangan yung batas? Mm -hmm. Maybe you will say, kailangan natin yung law for what? For safety, for welfare, and probably to avoid, to avoid chaos, or maybe... Its purpose is to have orderliness, correct? Tama. Sinagot ko na, no? So for today, this will be our uh, focus of our discussion, no? <clears throat> so let me pause for a while. May, nag, may nag umahabol sa klase natin. Ah, nawala si April ni kanina, okay? So let me proceed to our discussion, or this will be the focus of our discussion. First, Let's see what the background or historical background of Republic Act number 1425, and that is Rizal Law. Okay, and then of course, let's uh, young point of our discussion or center of our uh, argumentation, and then characteristic of literature and application to discussion of merits of Rizal Law, and then we have young hazard of translation, di ba na translate yung kanya mga work, yung noli el. At saka LPD. And then, of course, lastly, it's about, of course, the conclusion of this discussion. So let's proceed to the background of Rizal Law. So this is known as Republic Act Number 1425 or Rizal Law. No? So probably it was on June 12, 1956. When Senator Claro and Recto proposed this law, no, uh, as uh, collaborate with him, we have Osepi Laurel, and that time the president is Ramon Magsaysay, no. Of course, uh, is it is a compulsory to the public and private school, and of course, yung emphasis something to do with the Nolin Metanchere and El Filibusterismo. So partly, it's um, uh, result law. It talks about results life and work kaya nga meron kayong course na result ngayon are you aware that all the colleges in the philippines no of uh, leading to four year course they are required no one of the requirement before they will graduate it's to earn a degree or to finish a course yung result life no kaya ito hindi siya nawawala talaga okay to continue so, what is the objectives of RA or Republic Act Number 1425? So, kaya ginawa yan, one of the reasons, it was intended no, to the rededication to the ideals of freedom and nationalism for which our heroes live and died. So, bakit Rizal? No? Because they are aware that maybe we can say the one who enlightened us of course, there are many, you know, many heroes who are part of the Enlightenment, and I think one of them is Rizal. Kaya siguro Rizal yung napili, no? And then, of course, another objective niya, it's memorializing with special fondness and devotion their lives and work that have shaped the national character. So when we talk about nationalism or shaping our national character as Filipino, of course, one of the recognized uh, personality, it's Rizal. But aside kay Rizal, nandiyan din si Aguinaldo. Sino pa ba? From Aguinaldo, of course, we have <clears throat> uh, Andres Bonifacio and then the other heroes, uh, Polinario Mabini, and sino pa ba? Emilio Asinto, Juan Luna, and so on. So another objectives of this, of RA 1425, is to suffuse the light. No? Parang we, we, we try to uh, understand no, or something that uh, it's like work and writing of Rizal, which give constant inspiring source of inspiration to the youth. 
I hope no ganun nga yung magiging ano niya no maging effect niya no it's become a constant and inspiring source of inspiration to the youth especially during their formative and decisive year in school so kayo bago na yung naging curriculum niyo no you are probably the pioneer ba tama ba in the K to 12 program so that uh, nung hindi pa K to 12 pag third year ka yung Filipino course uh, Filipino subject mo third year high school yan no naka-focus siya sa no limit tangier eh. and then pag fourth year el filipino studies mo but when K uh, K to 12 implemented hindi na siya no para ano na lang part of it lang okay kaya siguro sa college uh, talagang sinama siya ulit and one of the objective of republic art another objectives of republic art act number 1425 all schools no are enjoined to develop moral character personal discipline civic conscience and to teach the duties of citizenship so probably this is one of the objective of RA 1425 not para ma-develop daw or probably to develop your moral character in student in learning this course no and then personal discipline civic conscience and of course the duties of citizenship okay so those are the objectives of RA 1425 from the objective So we still proceed on the historical background. So probably bago maging B, uh, rather bago maging law yung isang Republic Act, dadaan muna siya sa Senate, no? So meron tayong tinatawag na Senate Bill. So before it became Republic Act number 1425, it was proposed by Claro and Recto as Senate Bill number 438. Yan, no? So on April 3, 1956, uh Claro and Recto filed the application of the Senate number 14, uh, 438 by the Committee on Education, si Josepi Laurel, and supported by all but three of the members of the Hopper House. So, majority body siya, no? It has been supported by, by, by the, what we call the member of the Hopper House. So, decision is not controversial measure, no? So there is no controversy. Between everyone agree to to have this kind of bill, no. <clears throat> And then in April 17, 1926, Osefi Laurel, chairman of the Committee on Education, began began his sponsorship of the measure. So kan nung time na yon, 1956, meron tayong tinatawag na chairman of the Committee of Education. Ngayon ano na no? Uh, what we called the chair director, no? Okay, a commissioner, but the time it's chairman of the committee and and nagkataon si Osepi Laurel, yung chairman of the committee that time. Osepi Laurel is a former president of the Philippines, no? I think naging president yan during the time, during the Japanese war, no, 1940 something. And then long draw disputation uh, disputations Uh, what does it mean when saying about this long drawn disputation? So of course there are some debates, arguments, something that uh, those who oppose and those who agree, no, as regard to this law. Meron ba nago oppose? Meron, no. Particularly uh, the the school like University of Santo Tomas, UST. Then those Catholic school, no, and I, one of the you know those who oppose is something to do with USD, the Catholic school, because parang parang na alarm sila, baka it will lead into something negative as regard to the church, baka mayroon siyang mag, hindi magandang implikasyon sa simbahan, no, particularly sa Catholic church. But this non-drone disputation, ah, uh, so ma, from three tenths week, no. Uh, when you say three tenths week, three weeks silang nagano something uh, this arguing or debating, then somehow this one shed enlightened and acrimonious, no? So to continue, I will accept those ano later na lang, no? <clears throat> so the original version of Senate Bill Number Forty Eight read as follows. So ito yung content ng 
original Senate Bill Number 48, an act to make no limitantiere and el filibusterismo compulsory reading matter in all public and private colleges and university and for other purposes. So the original Senate Bill Number 438, uh, napakalimit ng ano niya, no, yung yung gusto niyang may sa batas, yung maging ano lang, no, yung no limitan jere, tsaka LPD, maging compulsory reading siya, no? What does it mean when you say compulsory reading? Ibig sabihin, in the in the school, kailangan yung bata nabasa niya yung no limitan jere at LPD busterismo, no? It's, become, it's something that is a compulsory reading. <clears throat> okay? Continue. April 19, 1956. So, so yung three weeks to conflict, no? Conflict on the House of the Representative. So, si Congressman Jacobo Z. Gonzalez introduced the House Bill Number 5561. Probably this bill, it's identical copy of the House Bill Number 438. Kasi may nag oppose no? So, parang, let's, re let us revise it. And then, they come out to us, House Bill Number 5561 or 5561. But, the content somehow it's similar to House Bill Number 438. April 23, 1956, as I mentioned, nakaron ng debate on Senate Bill Number 5561. No, so rather no, yes, yeah, Senate Bill or House Bill. Now, so the Senate are divided into two. No. Yung pro, pro, from the uh, pro state and then yung mga nago, yung pro result, those who are in the state, and then those who are against the against Rizaldo are those who are in the church. No, of course, who are in the state, we have Senator Laurel and Claro M. Recto, no, or Senator Claro M. Recto, and then the church, ito yung nago oppose si Sen Senator Mariano J. Cuenco. Francisco Rodrigo and the Corozo Rosales. So, kasi, why? Why they oppose? As I mentioned a while ago, it might have a negative effect as regard to the image of the Catholic Church. Yun ang ano nila, no? Parang we don't worry. On May 2, 1956, the com Committee on Education recommended the approval without amendment. So, mabilis siyang na, ano, no? na approve. So, it's, so, wala mang one month less than one month in approved ni, ni what we called uh, as the Committee of Education, si Senator <clears throat> uh, Laurel, no? Okay, to continue. On May 9, 1956, again, nagkaroon na naman debate. So, probably ganun talaga ang nangyayari sa Senate, no? There is a debate to clarify, no? Started following the report on the Committee on Education. But the time... Parang ano na siya, no? what we call this one, wala nang choice. Kasi it has been approved without amendment. No? Hindi na siya pwedeng ma-amend. Okay, to continue. So, kay, ito yung argument ni Senator Francisco Rodriguez. Sabi niya, a vast majority of our people are the same time Catholics and Filipino citizens. No? At such, they have two great loves, their country and their faith. These two loves are not conflicting loves. No? Parang napapanahon siya no? kahapon, Valentine's Day. They are harmonious affections like the love of a child for its father and for its mother. This is the basis of my stand. There is not concrete a conflict between nationalism and religion between the government and church. So one of the arguments of Senator Francisco Rodrigo, no? Yun nga, no? Uh, so there is no separation between the church and the state. Now, if, if, if the law will be implemented or approved, so they have to consider also, so what we call yung uh, <clears throat> about being a Catholic or being a religious. No, it's not about nationalism, but rather as being a Filipino citizen, a Filipino citizen who is a Catholic at the same time is a citizen. So being a Catholic and a citizen, of course, 
So its uh, its love for its country and its love and its faith must not contradict. Okay? Baka kasi magkaroon ng ganun na konsepto. Okay? To continue. So the response of Senator Claro M. Recto, so hindi na na-mention, no? maybe this is one of the allegation of uh, the former uh, the other senator no <clears throat> so nagrespond yung sa state si Claro Embreto sabi niya Rizal did not pretend to teach religion or theology when he wrote those books referring to the novel no limitangere and el filibusterismo kasi kung naalala nyo parang very satire yung novel niya no and something it's against the catholic church <clears throat> kasi yung in the image of uh, Father ano, Damaso no? and the other priests, Father Salve, Father, uh, <clears throat> Father Sibayla. No? So something na negative yung image nila. No? So to continue, aim at inculcating civic consciousness in the Filipinos, national dignity, personal pride, patriotism, and if references were made by him in the course of his narration to a certain religious practices in the Philippines in those days, and to the conduct and behavior of bearing minister of the church, it was because it portrayed faithfully the general situation in the Philippines as it then existed. No? So in the intention yon, and after the result, it's not against the church. result, very uh, ano siya sa Catholicism, no? Uh, religious din siya, no? Nobody can dispute that situa situation, discipline, civic consciousness, and to teach the duties of citizenship now, therefore. So th those, that's uh, the argument of Senator Claro M. Recto in response kay Senator Ano, okay? Continue, moving on. And then by, or rather, on June 12, 1956, naging Republic Act number no. 1425 siya, or also known as Rizaldo. And that time, it was approved by the President Ramon Magsaysay. <clears throat> okay? So ito yung mga personalities, no? Si Clara M. Recto. Si Clara M. Recto siya yung nag-recommend or nag-propose nag to make it a law, no? And then... Si uh, <clears throat> Laurel, no, former president Laurel, no, siya yung parang nag-approve, rather nag-approve for, uh, for to become a law, no, and then of course, uh, approval of the president si Ramon magsaysay. So, so yun yung parang kwento, no, or something about the history of the Republic Act. So from na it started in 1956. Imagine, ang tagal na yan, no? 1956, hindi pa ako pinapanganak noon, no? So, 20 years after, doon pa na ako papanganak, no? Okay? To continue? So, Rizal Law. So, nakikita yung caricature, Rizal Law, and then Repub Reproductive Health Bill. So, parang satire yan, no? Kung pinapakita out the church against the Rizal Law. Although, nauna yung Rizal Law, so RH bill no So what is Republic Act number 1425 kung yung Senate bill kanina nakita natin na it's emphasizing no limitangere and el pili Republic Act number 1425 is an act to include in the curricula of all public and private schools colleges and university courses on the life, works, and writing of Rizal. Yun ang pinaka-purpose niya, no? Particularly, novel, no limit, and el filibusterismo, authorizing the printing and distribution, and distribution thereof and to other purposes. So, nasign yan during the Third Congress of the Philippines on June 12, 1956. So, so Independence Day, no? June 12. So, that's the Republic Act, no? Yun ang concern niya to include. So, that is the reason bakit ngayon meron kayong course na Rizal, the life and work of Rizal. So this is the executive summaries. 
Republic Act No. 1425, popularly known as Rizaldo, directs all the public and private school, colleges, and universities to include in their curricula courses or subject on the life, work, and writing of Rizal or Dr. Rizal, particularly the novels Noritain Jure and El Filibusterismo. The Board of National Education is given the mandate to carry out and enforce the purpose and intent of the Rizal law. So kahit saan ka mag-aral ngayon, kahit saan university or colleges, so probably dadaanan or kukunin mo talaga yung course na to, no? yung Rizal law. So probably ito yung kanina, yung objectives, no? Yeah, no, you know, whereas they more than any other period of our history, there's a need for red. So I think I will I mentioned this one already. Now we'll skip this one. So under section one of RH 14, RH, sorry, RA 1425. So what is under section one? So courses in the life, works, and writing of Jose Rizal, particularly the novel no limitante and Filibusterismo, should be included in the curricula of all schools colleges and university, public or private, provided that in valid collegiate courses, the original or an expurgated edition of Nolim et Tangere and in the Philippines or their English translation should be used as basic text. Tayo wala tayong text as regard to Noli and Fili, no? but in our library, meron naman. Pero ang um, recommended, it's something original or the unexpurgated one no? or the unexpurgated edition. So, parang merong rinerecommend, no? Kay Soledad, yan, no? Or rather, yes. <coughs> Isang right author, no? Okay? Ay, kay Lakson. So, to continue. So, what about Section 2? Okay? It shall be obligatory on all schools, colleges, and universities to keep in their libraries an adequate number of copies of the original and expurgated editions of the novel no limitangere and el filibusterismo. So, kailangan yung library natin, well, ano siya, no? Well, equip siya or so, da dapat mayroong book na original na no limitangere at yung el pili or the recommended one, yung translation, no? There are translation in English as, as well as other writings of results so be included in the list of approval books for required reading in all public and private school, colleges, and universities. That is under section 2, no? And then under section two, you know, the Board of National Education should determine the adequacy of the number of books depending upon the enrollment of school, college, or university. Pero sa atin din naman siya dong chinicheck kung merong ang sufficient, no? Is there any sufficient book about Rizal? But in this pandemic, sempre hindi kayo makakapunta sa library, no? Pero makakairam ba kayo ng book doon? Okay, later, okay, we'll talk about that. Under Section 3, the Board of National Education should cause the translation of the Noli Metangere and El Pilibusterismo, as well as the rather writing of Osersal into English, Tagalog, and principal Philippine dialect, pending kapampangan, no? cause them to be printed in cheap, popular edition, and cause them to be distributed uh, free of charge to persons designing to read them through the Puro Organization and Barrio Council through throughout the country. No, ito very idealistic to, no? Yung magdi-distribute ka ng ano ni Rizal, no? Parang sa akin, no, opinion ko lang to, it it's look like na parang reserista ka na, okay? Okay, so to continue. Now, of course we are aware that the two books of Rizal are the source of nationalism and of course these two books are considered a literary work or literature. Now, let's try to relate the char characteristic of literature and the application to the discussion of the merits, yung boon or vein of Rizal law, no? or what we call yung pagiging uh, advantage ng Rizal law. Okay? Tama lang ba na gawin talagang no, yung Rizal? Of course, wala na tayong magagawa. Law na, law na pala siya, no? <clears throat> okay, so... So these are the some concern, no? Literature came to occupy a mediating position between the universal ideas of freedom and nationalism. These are referring to the two novels of Rizal, no? El Filibusterismo and No Limitangere, no? They mediate 
the position between the universal ideas of freedom and nationalism. Literature, the novel of Rizal, no, uh, Noli Fili, assume a mediating function precisely because Rizal novels serve as artifactual. Yes, they are artifactual. What does it mean when we say artifactual? So from the word artifacts, no? They are artifacts. At the same time, they are the source of facts, no? Uh, so concrete example, it's something to do with Filipino culture. So kung titignan mo, or rather natitignan, kung babasahin mo yung nobelang yon, yung dalawang novel na yon, you can parang nag-time travel ka wherein you can imagine what happened during that time, no? Ano bang nangyari noong 19th century? So probably those books are written, no? In uh, 18-something, so that is 19th century, no? Parang magbabalik, ano ka, panahon, no? Or balik tanaw. So makikita mo, ano bang nangyari that time, no? At yung nangyayari bang noon are still occurring, no? In our present time. Probably, somehow we can say yes, somehow we can say no, no? Meron pa ba? Okay. To continue. So as part of our discussion, so these are the, some of the argumentation. Ne? So sabi dito, a nation literature is not just what it, wa uh, what it once was, but what it has and can become. So a nation literature. So what is our literature as a nation? So we're, when we're referring to the novel, No Limit Tangere and El Philip Stilismo, sabi dito, it's not just what it once was, but what it has and can become. If you read the no, two novels of Rizal, No Limit Tangere and El Philip, so what do you think will happen to you or do you think ano kanya yung effect nito sa iyo or what how it will impact you no or impacted you no uh, yung pag pinasa mo sila of course malalaman mo lang yon if you read the the novels no okay one of the argumentation ito yon no translating a literary piece may compromise its original context tama yon no there are some translation because the two novels are originally written in Spanish. Okay, so the two manuscript, no, yung original, they are written in Spanish. And of course, there's a tendency in the translation may sacrifice or compromise its context. Pwedeng magbago siya, no? Particularly kung yung nagta-translate in our present time, nasa panahon natin ngayon, no? Kasi baka ma-include niya kung ano nangyayari ngayon. Or, as regard to translation, baka yung pagkakaintindi, iba, no? So, kaya pwedeng ma-compromise yung original context or mag-suffer yung original context. Kaya may approved, no? Approved uh, re or recommended. The hazard of translation do not weaken the merits of Rizal Law. But some argued, no? Kahit na translate siya, hindi naman probably makukompromise o masasacrifice or something yung pagiging uh, merit ng Rizaldo. Or rather, not only Rizaldo, no? we're referring to the novel of Rizal, no? So, Republic Act 1425, no? yung Rizaldo, remains to be realistic. So, this is the argument, no? Nung kung dati pinag-uusapan sa Senate, kung dapat mang isabatas, nung may isabatas na siya, ito na yung argument, no, or something debate, kung realistic ba siya, or what is the essence of learning what we call yung Rizalo or Republic 1425, no? Kaya ngayon, dinidiscuss natin siya. Okay, to continue, moving on. So, let's, uh, a brief, uh, phantom, uh, review about the characteristic of literature, no? So when we refer to a literature, no, or literature, so somehow they said uh, the rim of literature, it's something living and dynamic, no? And li 
so another rim of literature, it is grounded on people history, culture, share of social, psychological, and linguistic phenomena. So when we talk about the, lit the rim of literature, we are referring to the work of Rizal, being the, no uh, the work of Rizal, Noli Metangere, and El Filipo Stilismo. Moving on. So the teaching of Rizal life and work, specifically Noli Metangere and El Filipo Stilismo, bring constant and inspiring source of patriotism and nationalism properly to the minds of the youth, spe uh, especially during their formative and decisive year. The legacy of results literature visualized the reality of the Philippine society, which inflamed the spirit of nationalism and patriotism. So, mapapatunayan ba natin yan? Of course, you can only prove that if you read the novel Noli and El Filibusterismo. Totoo ba sinasabi na it's something that inflamed the spirit of nationalism and patriotism? The scenario of the past may be different today, but the essence of patriotism and nationalism remain the same. Okay, parang argument din to, no? Na, oh, nangyari na yan, noon pa yan. So probably hindi na siya applicable or wala na siyang uh, impact ngayon, no? Sa kasalukuyan. Pero sabi ng iba, the scenario of the past may be different, tama, no? So during the Spanish time or, or yung mga nangyari sa Pilipinas, that's, of course, that scenario are different. No? But the essence of patriotism and nationalism remain the same. So, kung sino yung Pilipino noon, sila pa rin yung mga Pilipino ngayon. Kung anong konsepto nila as regard to patriotism and nationalism, ay, hindi nagbabago yun. Okay? Kung may changes man, of course, hindi naman totally nagbago. Okay, gaya ng kanina, yung pinanood natin yung vlog, no? As regard to heroism, iba na yung konsepto about heroism. How about nationalism and patriotism? Iba, pa rin, iba na rin ba yung konsepto natin? The youth today are facing a different set of social cancers. Hmm. So yes, but the concept taught by Rizal and other Filipino heroes are still relevant. Yes, the social cancer in the No Limit Angere as well as in El Filibusterismo, are different from the social cancers now that we are facing. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng social cancers? Ano ba yung cancer ng lipunan? So when we talk about cancer of lipunan sa Noli Metangere and El Fili, it is something to do with this, uh, the scenario or what you call the situation that time. Sino ba yung tinutukoy niya, ano bang tinutukoy niya na cancer ng lipunan? Of course, it's referring to the corrupt officials, uh, to the uh, bad priests or friars. Of course, meron pa rin ngayon, no? There are still corrupt officials. So, applicable pa rin siya. Okay? So, a while ago, we, are men we mentioned as regard to the ha uh, translation, no? So, these are the possible hazard of translation, no? So, from Rizal Law, from its merits. And then, of course, we try to weigh also as regard to translation to broaden our understanding. Kung totoo nga ba na uh, mag-change yung context niya or ano ba yung hazard ng translation, no? Una, is something to do with the biases of translator in terms of his or her interpretation. Kaya hindi lahat sinasuggest, no? I really recommend, sorry. Hindi lahat ng mga na-translate na Noli Metangere and LPD are recommended, no? May pinipili lang. Yung ang isa, yung kay Lacson, no? Meron, meron sa library actually. So, a translator, uh, probably, sometimes nagiging bias siya, no? So, because of this attitude being biased, no? So, probably, it might affect the interpretation of the original context. Okay? Bawa, yung nag-translate sa Noli Metangere, uh, let's say religious siya, no? Religious. Or let's say a priest, no? Pari siya. 
So, pwedeng magiging bias siya toward the idealism of Rizal as regard to religion. So, pwedeng baguhin niya yung image ni Padre Damaso. No? So, that's referring to the biases of the translator. And then, we have what we call the demodernization, exclusion of the reader, excision of the Gallic words, and then yung boulderization, and then the euro-differentiation. So, so, we will elaborate all this, no? And then yung anachronism. Okay, so when we refer to the demo, the modernization, also na mention na natin to, no? Yung biases, personal views, belief, perception, or feelings of the translator. Sometimes pwedeng maka-affect sa translation, no? Then, when we say the modernization, this is referring to the set is in the past, and that's, and that's the dominant tense is the past, but there are frequent shift into the present. So, one of the hazard in translation, no? Pwedeng ma-integrate yung nangyayari sa kasalukuyan. So, we call that one as the modernization. Parang namomodernize siya, no? Or yung pagkakaintindi, hindi nakatulad ng original na konsepto. Parang pinapasok na ng translator kung ano yung nangyayari sa, sa kasalukuyan. The modern time, no? So, that is the modernization. With somehow, it can influence or affect the, or, the translation or what or rather the context of the original manuscript or the unexpurgated expurgated one. From the modernization, yung exclusion of the reader. So what does it mean? Exclusion of the reader in the translation served to distance rather than the, uh, familiarize the author. So exclude, to exclude the reader, no? So in translation, uh, sometimes the translator forget the readers. So minsan may mga words na mahirap intindihan kasi uh, hindi in-include yung understanding ng reader. So in translation, so kailangan nililevel mo rin siya on the, on was, uh, kung kaninong sino yung mga readers mo. Okay? So excluding the readers in translation may influence the original context as well. To continue. And then yung excision of Tagalog words. What does it mean? It is removing or replacing words from the original piece, thereby giving it a different context. Example, in Noli Metangere, Rizal used, it is written in Spanish, okay? It is written in Spanish, but there are Tagalog words wherein they are not translated in Spanish. One thing I remember, yung word bata, no? So if the translator is a foreigner, no, a translator foreigner siya, hindi na, uh, hindi na siya nakakaintindi ng Tagalog. So probably, pag tinranslate niya yung Noli Metangere, and then he tried to find out a uh, word bata into Spanish, considered it as a Spanish, but he, he is not aware it's Tagalog, no? So somehow, pwedeng mabago, magkaroon ng pagbabago, okay? May mga Tagalog words na ginamit si Rizal. Example, the word tinola, <coughs> sorry, ginamit niya, no? Tinola, pero yun, kung may translation ba yun, siyempre bala, no? And then another uh, hazard of translation is something to do with vulgarization, founded by Tom, uh, or somehow it has originated with Dr. Thomas Bowdler, no? Vulgarization. What is vulgarization? Vulgarization is the act of changing by removing parts that, uh, that an author is uncomfortable with or could offend readers, like passages alluding to political or religious matter as well as. Uh, swear words and reference to bodily function. As I mentioned a while ago, yung biases of the author, no? So, one, so probably we can consider the vulgarization as something to do with the biases of the author. Or maybe parang nag screen siya, no? Meron siyang word na gustong hindi siya masyadong uh, nagaharas or hindi siya masyadong nananakit. So, binabago, pinaparaphrase or something. And in paraphrasing or in choosing the right word, sometimes it can be hazard to translation or it might change 
the original context. So that is boulderization. So it is a process of removing, removing material that is considered improper or offensive from, uh, from a text or account, especially with the result that it becomes weaker or less effective. No? So that is boulderization. Now from boulderization, we have the eurofinization no ito yung nakita no ano ba yung the eurofinization results in the rare pieces had european influence and therefore had european understones or connotation so yung setting yes it's in san diego and referring to the philippines but the scenario and even the character themselves somehow yung kanilang ano it's very european no so it could be hazardous nung nung sinulat ni Rizal no yung kanyang nobelang nole but this is not referring to translation alone no but the literary work uh, per se and then last one yung anachronism so anachronism in this, in the process of translation some words objects or event are mistaken mistakenly placed in a time where they do not belong in the literary piece, no? So parang in anachronism, ginamit mo yung words pero hindi pa nag exist that time, no? Kaya pwedeng mabago yung translation or, pag, or yung context pala, sorry. It is an act of attributing a custom, event, or object to a period to which it does not belong. Ba, parang modernization din daw, no? The modernization. Parang pinapasok mo yung nangyayari ngayon, pero wala pa yun nung panahon ni Rizal or the time. Okay? So that is arachronism. So application to discussion. As part of translating the literary pieces of our national hero did not demerit the essence of Rizal law. Tama. There may be some modification in the writing as they were translated, but this did not ruin the very context or essence of them. The essence of nationalism and patriotism remain to be reflected even in expurgated edition. So kahit hindi yung original, meron pa na rin naman nationalism and patriotism. They, not, they may not be literally translated, but it's not the end of all the essence of Rizal law, or rather the Rizal course, no? They did not distort the very essence of the literature. So as a conclusion, given the characteristic of literature and the hazard of translation, as well as the discussion reaction, ergo the Republic Act 1425 remained to be realistic. The teaching of results life and works should be directed toward the realization of the goals and objectives of the law. This, we believe, will partly determine the being realistic of the law. Sabi nga ni Rizal, we have only once to die, and if we do not die well, we lose an opportunity which will not again be presented to us. Ano bang ibig niya sabihin? Tama, some best nang tayo mamamatay. So, sana bago tayo mamatay, Wag natin ayaan mawala yung mga opportunities no? or something essential, no? Kasi pag we lose those opportunities, yung mga pagkakataon na yun, yun nga, no? Hindi na natin pwedeng gawin ulit or hindi na natin sila magagawa. So, abang nabubuhay, we have to treasure life, we have to cherish those beautiful uh, experiences that we have and then we have uh, to find meaning or something let's our make our life something different and something essential okay so that's the end of Rizal law okay I'm stop sharing my screen uh, screen. <clears throat> okay, any concern? Any concern from the group? <clears throat> any
Any concern from the group? We are still 32, no? Any question? Any question po ba? Wala. Hello, are you still there? Here ako po. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, so one of the difficulties or something challenge of online uh, learning, no, yung hindi mo alam kung yung estudyante mo nandiyan pa ba sila o nakatulog na, no? Hindi pa kayo nakatulog. Ah, nakatulog. Hindi po, Hindi po, sir. Okay, as I mentioned a while ago, any concern or question as regard to Rizal Law? Meron ba kayong tanong? Freddy, may tanong ka ba? Nakaraise pa rin yung kamay mo. May tanong pa rin po ba? Yan, wala na. Wala po sa kaya. Ayan, Freddy, in, binaba, baka mangawit ka kaya binaba ko na yung kamay mo. Any concern? So I think kahit naka nandiyan kayo no at the back at uh, the back of this class of course I do not know what is happening with you kasi di naman nako on yung video niyo. So any wala kang tanong or any concern? Sir, ako po. Ah uh, yes, um stay with Mary Alison. Sir, ma-upload pa po ba yung files sa Edmodo? Yung presentation.